All right, thank you very much. And you should be there able we to go. All right. Here we go. Perfect. So, hey, everybody. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about building effective agents with small LLMs. Oh, I did full screen without actually doing the slideshow. There we go. Okay. So the agenda for today, we're going to be talking about when you're building agents, what's the difference between building something with a very large LLM versus a small LLM? And then when you do build something with a small LLM, patterns for doing that. And then we're going to do a live demo of uh, a locally running RAG agent that I built as a demonstration of types of patterns you can use for small LLMs. So, um, you know, when AI agents came on the scene, you know, what was it, maybe a year and a half ago, um, you know, just as everyone kind of caught on to the generative AI trend and new technology using really large models like ChatGPT, uh, when people started building AI agents, they were also using very large models like GPT-4. And um, it, you know, it worked great because you can kind of take these prompts and ask the LLM to do something for you. And it, you know, you chain a couple of them together, it works pretty well. Um, what happens is, uh, you know, people started trying to use small LLMs and they would plug small LLMs in and try to get it to behave the same way large LLMs work. And spoiler alert, doesn't work very well. Um, so there are some methods that you know, are kind of can work with large LLMs that don't work well with small LLMs, such as kind of throwing vague prompts and instructions at the LLM, um, giving lots of responsibility to a single agent. Um, and then when you're taking multiple turns with the, with the agent, kind of passing around full context and chat history. Um, these are areas where when I plugged a small LLM into an agent, that's where it went wrong. Um, so I'm here to show you another way. So just a quick primer, why, why would we want to use a small LLM? Um, well, what is a small LLM? I'm, I'm defining it here as something roughly 10 billion parameters or less, something that's going to be inexpensive to run. It's going to be inexpensive to fine tune if you want to do that. And you can run it on a personal device if you want to, um, especially if it's quantized. And the demo I'll show you will be running on my laptop. Um, so some principles for running um, agents, multi-agent systems with small LLMs is that, you know, you're going to want to treat it kind of like you would treat a team of humans. And just as you wouldn't hire one person for your company and have them do everything, unless maybe you're a startup, but as you scale and want to do things, you're going to have pull together teams of specialists and have them work together. So um, you're going to want to have specialized agents, give them very specific tasks, um, and you're going to want to give them information on a need to know basis. So for example, um, you know, if you have a, a web designer on your team, you, you're probably not going to give them the entire year executive plan and tell them to figure it out, right? You're going to give them information that's relevant to what they need to get done and some contextual information to understand where they fit in the picture. Then you're going to want people to review each other's work. Um, and when there is communication happening between teams, just as on your development team, um, it's it's not a free for all, right? It is a structured format um, where, you know, that, uh, going in between the teams. Um, you're gonna want adaptable planning for your small LMs and executive decision-making. So as you have a team of specialized agents, you're gonna need someone in the director's chair to kind of make decisions. So if you have a plan, you're gonna to have to know when to pivot the plan. And it's going to take feedback from all of the individual agents and decide kind of where to steer the ship. So again, just think of agents, small agent teams in the same way you would think about human teams and development teams if you're a developer. And I'll put this in a little more context. Um, so the demo that I'm going to show you, where you, you'll get a, a little better feel for this, I'm using, um, I'm from IBM, and I'm using IBM Granite model. So this is um, an 8 billion parameter model. 
Um, it is Apache 2.0 license. I can run it on a single GPU. Um, for, if I would like it to be super fast, I can run it quantized on my laptop, um, which is extremely convenient. I do have a beefy laptop. Um, it is a fully, it, the training data um, sources are fully disclosed. You can go on Hugging Face, read the white paper. Um, it has reasoning capabilities. So this was kind of a perfect, um, a perfect um, LLM to power my agent because it's got the reasoning, um, it can run locally. And um, so, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be using the demo with. Um, and this is the, the demo that I've built. It's on GitHub, I have a link below. Um, but the idea was I wanted to build something for my team to use where we could do research, search through our like team personal documents on our laptop without going out to the internet um, and like feeding our personal documents into something on the internet, we can run it locally. So I, I, to make it easy to use, and I'll show you later, we've got it running inside of Open Web UI and um, using Olama locally for, um, for inferencing locally. Um, it's written uh, in Python, obviously. Um, we're using web search tools and a vector DB locally for, for database. Um, and what this, or let, me, let me back up. So what this agent is going to do is I'm going to pose it a question where it needs to search through my documents and search through the web to find me an answer. Um, and uh, so it's gonna be using tools to do this. And this is what my workflow is going to look like. Um, so again, rather than taking one agent and throwing a, a big prompt at it, we're gonna break this process down into um, multiple steps. So for instance, I may ask it, hey, look at my meeting minutes um, and tell me what things need to get done and then maybe find me some tools on the internet that can help me, right? So um, what this, the first step in the plan is our high level planner will put a plan together and it'll be something I found that just getting a plan ahead of time, even if you don't stick to the plan is helpful. Kind of like humans, you need a direction to go in, right? And then you can adapt later. So we get a high level plan and then our research agent is gonna take the first step in the plan. So that might be search through my documents. So it'll use tool calls to do that. Um, it'll use a tool call to search through the vector database. Our step critic will determine, was that step successful? So if it was search through my documents and find meeting minutes and it searched through the documents, but they don't look like meeting minutes, the step critic can say that was a failure in a step and that can be feedback to the next step. Or it could say, yes, it found the meeting minutes. So the next step would be the goal critic. Um, and that will say, did we meet our goal yet? So it'll look at the objective and figure that out. And again, in each step in this process, we may not necessarily be passing the full context, but for the step critic, maybe we'll just understand what the last step was. So it doesn't have to look at everything. The goal critic, it may look at all the output of all the successful steps and then say, did we meet our goal yet? And then based upon that, our reflection agent will figure out, okay, this was the plan. This step was successful or not, that our goal has been met or not. And then just figure, do we end it? Do we move on to the next step? Do we follow the plan? Do we veer from the plan? So as you can see, these are kind of these micro agents in a way that are taking on these very specific parts and they're all kind of teaming together. So um, live demo time. So I've got this running uh, in my web browser. So this is open web UI. I'm going to give it a prompt. So I've got some local documents in here that are completely fabricated meeting minutes. And I'm going to say for each open action item identified in my projects meeting minutes, find me some open source projects that can help me accomplish the task. So this is I'm going to get that going. And so it's creating a plan. I'm going to show you the terminal over here. So this shows you all the chatter going in between the agents and you can see the data that's being passed back and forth. So a little bit cold start on loading the model. All right, so it's got a plan. So here's the plan. It's going to search the documents to identify the open action items for each one. Can, you know, so you can see I won't go through all of them, right? So it's got a multi-step plan. 
So first step, it figures out, all right, I've, if I'm searching through the documents, I've got to use the personal knowledge search tool. So it searches through, it finds the meeting minutes, and here's the action items. And so now we're going to move on to the step critic. We're going to say, was, this, was the step successful? The answer is, yeah, successful. And we're going to ask the goal judge, did, did we meet our goal yet? Um, and the answer is not yet. So we keep going. So then the reflection assistant gives us our next step. For each identified action item, formulate a clear and concise description of the task it represents. So it's going on. It's yes, next step. Haven't met the goal yet. And now it's doing a web search. So for each of those action items, it's searching for resources on the internet to help us with them. And here it goes. And it's running. All right, step critic. I'm watching the clocks, make sure we don't run over. All right, step critic, we did it. Goal judge, did we meet it yet? Yes, we met our goal. And now finally that we've met our goal, the report generator will report, uh, take all that data that was gathered and answer my question. Um, while that runs, it might take a second. I'm going to show you uh, again the uh, GitHub links in case you're interested. Oh, and here it is. So it one of the action items, yeah. So it picked out each of the action items and did a Google search and dare I click on them. Yes, it's not hallucinated. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Um, let me bring up that. That's that's the last slide. It has links to tutorials and GitHub repos. Um, if you'd like to just use it for your own usage or use it as just kind of a starting point or a reference point of brainstorming of how to build your own agents. So thank you very Kelly, much. I have, I have one or two questions for you, just to bring it home. I think this was really impressive. Thank you so much. Doing it live also pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, it will just to throw it up. So you use the a uh, parameter model here that you used, uh, I think four times, if I counted right, you know, four agents, four times, so on, right? Uh, maybe mm -hmm. in loops, but let's just loop. yep. pass. And would you argue that if we were to measure some kind of accuracy, I mean, let's not, let's not dive into the details, but some kind of yeah. performance accuracy, would you argue that this would be same accuracy as maybe a, I'm going to throw a number there, uh, a 70B model that you would only do once, that you would run once? That's a good question. Um, <sighs> or 250B? Is it the same accuracy? I think, I mean, I, I think in the end, you care about the end results, right? Yeah. And, and I think at the end result is yes, you can get the same results. Um, it, depending on how, I think the emphasis here is you, the important thing here is how you design your workflow, right? And I think you can achieve the same results with a very larger model with smaller models if you're designing your workflow properly. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is this is the point I was trying to make because this can run on your laptop, could run on a phone, could run in a, a what's called air gap, so you don't have access mm -hmm. to cloud GPUs. So I think this is very powerful, right? And that that was that was that's where I was going with this. I was like with yeah. an AB, let's say let's say to it, by orchestrating it and a right workflow, you can replicate a 250B model by itself, and it's pretty amazing. Awesome. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Thank All you right, so much. Super.